Uh, okay, good afternoon, everybody. So today is our honor to have uh, that we have invited uh, Professor Kim Myung Ho, uh, who is an associate professor from the uh, County University. So uh, Professor Kim has uh, got this bachelor and PhD degree from Seoul National University, and he has a lot of important work in the quantum groups and the uh, quiver hack algebras. So today his topic is the uh, localization of quiver hack algebra and open Richard Richard varieties. So let's welcome the speaker for the uh, good talk. Thank you for the introduction. First, thanks very much for inviting me to this nice colloquium. So I have I had give I had given talk in this colloquium three years ago or something. I don't remember exactly. And some of them, uh, some of the contents will overlap. At the time, but I don't expect there are some people who attend to the last one, so I think it's okay. And I prepare only 20 pages, so I think I should be slow to explain it. Yeah, so the title is The Localization of Quiver Hack Algebra and Open Richards Variety. So this is a joint work with Masaki Kashiwara and Lins and Sejin Wu at Songkyung University. At the Uyong Park at the University of Seoul. Yeah. So let me give you the brief uh, uh, plan to my talk. So the first, I want to I, I'll give you the definition of open Richardson variety. So I denote by R and WB, and it's coded ring. So here W and B are elements in the vial group. And so, so open Richardson variety is a, a, a variety which is parameterized by the pair of wild group element, and we are interested in the coordinate ring of this variety. And the second, so we, we want to understand this coordinate ring in terms of the pivot hack algebras, and the I denote by R. So this is a coincidence. This is R and this is R, but yeah, it's just coincidence. <clears throat> and we actually we uh, uh, will focus on its module category. So here the R G mode denotes the Finite dimensional modules over Kibo hack algebras, which is graded, G denote uh, stand for the grading. So, and for each pair of uh, fiber of element, I introduce you a subcategory or CWB, and which will uh, play an important role in the other uh, other part of my talk. And the second, the third one, the localization of this category, and the limit of by CWB tilde. So we are the right graders, the right graders, it's, it's just the name or the, our terminology. So it is nothing but the, you, you just consider uh, the set of simple objects in this category. So who are the, the, the set of simple modules? So they are, they are some modules of the uh, uh, associative algebra called the QA algebra. And together with some, the, the functorial morphisms. So we need some uh, functorial homomorphisms for each simple object. And uh, we have some family of this pair, and it satisfies some nice properties. Then we call it the right graders. Then the third item is saying that if you have a nice uh, something like uh, right graders, then you can construct a localization of this monoidal category with respect to this simple family of simple modules. So uh, to combine those what, the two and three, we can construct, so yeah, this is a summary. So there is an abelian monoidal category, uh, which is will denoted by CWB tilde, the, the third one, the, the localization in the third, the consisting of representations of PYK algebras, such that it's a gross ending ring is isomorphic to the coordinate ring I introduced in the first line. So this is a summary. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. You uh, you you may not understand what I wrote here because it's just a summary. So you you don't need to understand everything here. And the uh, the uh, hope for the future study should be the following. So this is for ex expert. So we expect that this category is a monoidal classification of the cluster structure on this code entry. And so I do not talk about the uh, cluster algebra structure on uh, today's talk. But anyway, there are this coordinate ring is not only the uh, not only the uh, commutative ring, 
is uh, has very nice structure, so-called cross algebra structure. And this cross algebra structure can be understood uh, via, uh, via the monoidal category we constructed. This is our hope. So there is some pro problem of the program, so-called the monoidal categorization of cross algebras. And we expect that our category will give an answer of the problem of monoidal categorization of the cross algebra structures. So, so let me start. So yeah, so so let me introduce some notions I uh, I need to fix. The first one is the G denotes the complex linear algebra group, and uh, our real algebra is finite dimensions, uh, finite type simple raised one. So you in in the example you used to consider the SLN or yeah GL or yeah it's enough to consider the GLN. So yeah. Okay. For example, so this you may take. This one, yeah. And the limit denoted by B plus and minus is the border subgroup. Yeah, this is nothing but the, in, in this case, B plus is the upper triangular matrices. Yeah. And we, we take the, the intersection of the border subgroup and its opposite that we get the maximal total. The diagonal matrices. And n plus minus denotes the maximum unipotent subgroup. This is the subgroup of this form. So all diagonal is equal to one, and it's a four diagonal, a four triangular. So diagonal is equal to one. And now let's consider, uh, let me denote by W, the normal, the, uh, the viable of G. So by definition, the uh, uh, viable of G. Defined by the quotient by the uh, normalizer of the maximal torus, quotient by torus itself. And in this case, the variable is uh, the, set, um, the symmetric mode of n letters. Then we can consider the flat variety. Flat variety is nothing but the quotient, the, the uh, space of left coset of this group uh, with respect to the borders of uh, maximum uh, borders of group. So in, in this case, the flex variety is uh, exactly the variety of flex. I mean, the you consider uh, the sequence of spaces. And this is equal to C to the N. And the dimension, the K minus the quotient is equal to one. So you consider the complete flex in the N-dimensional vector space and the variety of complete flex is isomorphic to the flat variety here. So now, yeah, so we need to consider the Schubert and Bokov decomposition of the flat variety. So I don't explain details here, but anyway, so you you, you should consider the double uh, decomposition of the uh, group itself, and then you consider the, the space of cosets, then it gives you the Schubert decomposition of the flat variety. And if you replace the, the Positive model with the negative model to the, uh, on the left hand side, then you will get the so called bulk of decomposition. So, this decomposition is very useful to study the flat variety. So, for example, uh, this one, yeah. So, if you, so, so here W is a viable element. So, in this example, this is not, nothing but the uh, symmetrical element. Then, uh, this uh, uh, set of uh, concepts is called the Schubert cell attached to. W. And it's known that this Schubert cell is affine space. So dimension is given by the length of the viable element W. And uh, if you consider the Apache Schubert cell, then it, it is the, again the uh, affine space. It, in this time, the dimension is the uh, given by the difference between the length of the longest element and the length of the element B. I answer this is B, not W. So anyway, so there are some notions, and these notions are all valid for arbitrary choice of the so complex linear algebra. Question. So like in this, uh, the, the last line, yes. so it's for V, but on the right-hand side, this isomorphism, there's no V. I'm sorry, yes, you're right, this is a brief. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. And what is W0? W0, yeah, W0 is the longest element. W, ah, so because W is a cast group, so we have a finite cast group, so you're longest term. Yeah, so, so this is just for the ex experts like him. Yeah, and so let me give you the example. I'm sorry, so I, I have one more. I have one more. So, open chance of variety is defined in this way. So, we just take the intersection of the super cell and the upper super cell. Right? So, this is the definition of open chance of variety. And it is known that the open chance variety RWB is non empty if and only if V is less than or equal to W in broad order. So for our order is a certain order on the, the on the set of uh, on the file group, but yeah, I do not explain the definition. Or you can take this set of definition of the browser. So there is known that the, the open source variety is non-singular, and its dimension is a difference between the length of one element, but may not be isomorphic to an affine space. So uh, different from the the Schweitzer cell cases. And this variety is useful or is considered, I'm sorry, it's considered by Kassan and Lustig in relation with the homological interpretation of the Kassan and Lustig polynomials. I don't explain about this one, so I just mentioned that some people are interested in this variety in some reason. It's different from my motivation anyway, so it's studied by many people. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So in particular, is, is, is the Ah, no, never mind. I, I don't want to ask anything. <laughs> Do we have a question? Oh, uh, yeah, I just forgot the notation of CW and CV. So, can you use the previous slides? But you have CR per V, which is, it should be the opposite. Like, you have defined C over. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, this is. Yeah. Okay. So, this is just for the last one should be this one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, we should distinguish. Like, this is my mistake. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You need to put this one. Then, then you can understand it. So the the left hand side C W is the super cell, and the right hand C V over V is the upper super cell. So we take the intersection of the super cell with the upper cell. Thank you. So let me give the example. So here are three cases. So. As I told you, the G, our group G is just non-singular matrices. And the, then the while group is isomorphic to the symmetric group over three letters. And we can identify this the while group with a set of permutation matrices, actually, in this case. Yeah, so and the positive Borel is the upper triangular matrices, and the negative Borel is the lower triangular matrices. And the unip uh, and the, here the M plus, the positive unipotent group is the unipotent group. With that means the all diagonal is equal to one, and uh, uh, it's upper triangle, upper triangular. And the T denotes the maximum groups, so diagonal matrices. Right? Then you can calculate actually this one, right? so because it's a, it's explicit, so you can just calculate what is the corresponding set of left coset. So the Schwarz cell in this case, see, let me see what is the W here. Uh -huh, yeah, let me see. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't write the wires W and B here, right? No, they're on the top, like W is this W not or uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so here I denote that the W is W the not the, the longest element, and the V is at two cases. So you can calculate, yeah, because it's totally so because the, for example, the, our file group is the permutation matrices, right? You can calculate. Then the result is the following. So if you consider the Schwetz cell, CW, which is the maximum Schwetz cell, then it is nothing but the, the coset represented by the matrices. So today, those two functions is non-zero. So here, this is a minor. So delta 3, 1 denotes the, the matrix coefficient and the third row and first column, this one. And the, this one, the 2, 3, 1, 2 denotes that you take the, the second and third row and the first and second column, so you will get the two byte matrices. This one, 
and you take the determinant. So that the minor should not be zero. So this is the condition for the Schwartz cell. And similarly, you can calculate the approximate cell. In this case, yeah, I mean it's, yeah, by calculation, I think we can do that. So then you just describe in this way. This is the that represents by the symmetrices such that alpha beta is the complex numbers. And you take the intersection, yeah, then take the intersection, then immediately you get this. So you just import, consider that alpha and beta is non vanishing, then it's non zero. Then, and the, the conclusion is that, that this open size variety is isolated to the porous length two. What is third plus three one? Third plus three one. Sorry. So the definition of C lower W and on the right side you have delta three one not equal to zero. Delta uh, two three one two not equal to zero. What is this delta mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a uh, matrix minor. A oh, minor. Ah, minor. Okay. Yeah. So it consists of. Those... Ah, I see. So you, you take, a, take the sub matrix and determine yeah. that, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's matrix minor. Yes. So they are regular functions on the matrix. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so the final so we get this is that we take the torus of length two. Yeah. So this is the open size variety, but as I told you, we want to understand that it's a code at three. And uh, here is some technical the uh, things, but I think I need to, to explain. So, yeah, please, yeah, please look at what I just forgot about it. So, so please look at this lemma. So, we are interested in the open size variety R W B. Yeah, and uh, there is a subset N W B of the uh, unit maximum unipotent group. So N denotes the maximum unipotent group. So there's some subset of the maximum response group, NWB, which is isomorphic to as a, the open size variety, as a variety. And actually, there's a nice decomposition, product decomposition of some subset OWB of the maximum response subgroup. So here, the OWB denotes some open subset of unipotent subgroup, and this subset has a nice decomposition of products. Of three dog set. And the middle one is I speak to the our size open size variety. So I didn't explain the detail for this the decomposition theorem. So here, so so yeah, if we admit this kind of descriptions, then does the coordinate ring we are interested in is a localization of the double invariant thing in the following sense. So we are interested in this one, coordinate ring. And this is, I speak to the, the some subset, uh, some variety of unipotent group. And if you consider this product decomposition here, then you can easily see that this co the coordinate ring of NWB is nothing but the invariant subring of the coordinate ring of OWB, the NV and M prime, M prime W and NV X from the left and from the right. Then, because this open subset OWB is defined as some subset, open subset, which is non vanishing element of some minor, right? or, or this is some function for the generalized minor. So there is a single, uh, there are just family of functions which define this uh, open subset OWB. So this uh, double in invariant ring can be understood as the double invariant ring of the unipotent group localized by this generalized minor. So you can forget everything. So you just remember that we are interested in this one. And this coordinate thing can be described as the localization of the double invariant ring. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> what is lambda i mean? Lambda i. Yeah. Ah, ah, this one. So here the lambda i is the fundamental i fundamental weight. So 
So I, I do not, I didn't give you the definition of generalized minor here. Yeah, so uh, if lambda m u integral weight, then there is a so-called some function on the group G, which is so-called the generalized minor. And we especially we take these two weights. W times the fundamental length from the I and the B time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I do not explain the definition of generalized because it's complicated. Then you just imagine that this is a generalized minor. So it is a minor in type A cases. That's what we just showed. We so before, right? Yeah, so it's a, yeah, in type A cases, they, they are indeed a minors. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me yeah, summarize once again. So there is an Ovelia monoidal category such that the gross ending link is I speak to the our one, right? This one. So, uh, so, so the our goal or our result is to pro, uh, produce some Ovelia monoidal category, which is isomorphic, uh, whose gross ending link is isomorphic to this localization of the whole linear link. Uh, sorry, good question. What's the tensor product on CRWB? Ah, this one? No, the other one. The ah, one. This one? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is just the, uh, it's not a category. So we consider the. Sorry, an algebra, like the right. multiplication. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, ring of regular functions on this uh, variety. Ah. So the product is a so product of functions. Okay, okay. okay. Product to the Function of function values, so it's mm -hmm. completely different. And, and this is an isomorphism of algebra, like algebras, right? Yeah, thank you. So mm -hmm. this is isomorphic as well as uh, algebra. If you uh, you you should unite the coefficient from integer to C here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So in particular, so the the multiplication here becomes competitive. Yeah. So, uh, so these uh, the generalized minors here are invariant with respect to both the right and the left action by uh, n prime and n. I think so. Yeah. So that there's no restriction on the weights and uh, on the W and D, and they are invariant with respect to both those left and right actions, right? So I didn't think about it, but I guess that so we yeah I think. Uh, and we consider the minor of this form. The weight is the chosen double lambda and b lambda i. And we consider the action of the unipotent group and prime w and prime g. Yeah. And I think they, yeah, in this choice, uh, with this choice, they are invariant. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, let me check it. <laughs> So, so uh, we will proceed in two steps. The first one, so I want to introduce a category whose gross end ring is a double invariant ring or unipotent group. And we want to localize this category to obtain the localization of double invariant ring, right? Then we, we, we achieve our goal, right? That's what I want to do, we want to do. And uh, let me, uh, give one lemma. So here, small n plus minus denotes the real algebra of important groups, and the q plus denotes the positive root lattice of our real algebra G. So that means you just consider the free abelian group that by simple roots of our real algebra G. Yeah, then the, this the double invariant ring over unipotent group, uh, the, yeah, is can be described uh, some uh, yeah by some calculations. Finally, we get this description, so the, this double invariant ring can be understood as an intersection of two rings. And the one is this one, so this is the functions on the important group, which it vanishes by the action of Schumacher generators uh, consecutively, such that the corresponding the weight is belong to this set. And the second is the functions, which vanishes by the Action of ocean wide generators from the left, uh, such that the consecutive uh, the sum of the weight belong to the distance. Yeah. 
so so the point is that we we can describe this double invariant ring as an intersection of two rings, and both of them can be described in terms of the action of sugar generators. So yeah, yeah. Now now uh, let me keep this one and uh, let me move to the construction of category. So yeah, let me recall that Q plus was the positive root lattice of our real algebra. And the, now, yeah, so now it's totally from the thing. So now I introduced the one is the Kibo Heck algebra. So this is an uh, interesting thing. And so the Kibo Heck algebra is the family of associated graded algebra. So it's a family of algebra. So we have infinitely many algebras. And with each of them is parameterized by an element in the positive root lattice. So there are lots of uh, 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 associative algebras. And uh, uh, informally, we can say that this is defined as the categorization of the half of a quantum group in some sense. And the most important fact is that the specialization, and one of the most important fact is that the specialization of the negative half of a quantum group at Q equal one is isotropic to the coordinate ring of the unipotent subgroup. So we, it, we need only this one. So we don't need many things on the quantum groups. Right? So, so please recall that we want to uh, find uh, some category which uh, the percentage of ring is I think, some double, double invariant ring over this ring, right? But the key behind category, the, the answer for the categorization of the coordinate ring only the so. So, so let me give you the definitions. So to, to proceed, so for each beta, so beta is the parameter I did, uh, parameter, uh, is an element for uh, define the QYK algebra. So R beta before the QYK algebra has beta, actually. So whenever you have a beta, and you can consider the set of sequences of actually the positive root, such that for the sum is equal to beta. So if beta is given, then you have a final set of sequences. And that one, we, we need one more, then for each the positive root alpha and alpha j, for example, then we can choose a polynomial. So Q gamma i j u b denotes some polynomial. So it's just, poly, it's just, just a polynomial, so you do not uh, care about it. We, we have some polynomial, or we need to choose some polynomial with a certain condition to define the, our algebra. So this is the definition of key algebra. Uh, before, what is the map vault K? So when you say Z graded K algebras, what is the K? Uh, I'm sorry, the K denotes space space from the again. The K is a D. The, the C or? It, it, you, you can work with arbitrary field. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. so for some reason, so after that we need to uh, impose some condition here, but up to here, so you can work with arbitrary field. Ah, okay, okay. So now let me give the definition of Kibo Heck algebra. So this is an algebra generated by some element with, yeah, this is the algebra over this field, I'm sorry. So we consider the algebra over this field. And we have three kind of generators. The first one is E nu. So the, here the nu is the sequences I used before. We consider the sequences. And the XK, so there are L many element uh, XK and the cow M. So there are L, min L minus one many element. How? So the first one is called the uh, idempotent generators. They are idempotent. If you look at this, the defined relation, the first line, right? Then the E nu times E nu prime is uh, E nu if nu and nu prime are equal, or are zero, right? So it is idempotent and also gonna. So they are also gonna idempotent. And their sum is equal to the uh, multiplicative identity. So they form the complete system of orthogonal idempotent. And the XK called the polynomial generators because they behave as a polynomial. So if you uh, take a product of two generate uh, polynomial generators, then they commute to each other. And the third one is so-called the simple reflection generator. So if you are familiar with the, the Heck algebra or group algebra of symmetric groups, then there is a element in corresponding to simple reflections, 
right? So it is similar to the relations, but it's slightly different. So for example, if you take the square yeah. of the simple reflection generators, and if it were a group algebra symmetric group, then it should be equal to one, right? Or if it were the heck algebra, then you have some relation here, which is a, a linear relation, right? But it's not even in that, it is given by the polynomial we choose from the beginning. And the, the polynomial generator and the simple tensor generator have nice or so if yeah so so polynomial uh, simple reflection generator acts on the polynomial in this way if it is equal to zero then we can say that those two are the same right then we can say that the uh, simple reflection acts on the polynomials but it's not I mean there is some error terms this way. And the, the last one, the great relations between the simple reflections, but it's not equal to zero because there are some error terms. So you can consider the Cuba Hecke algebras as some cousin of Hecke algebras, and whose relation is given by some error terms, which is parameterized by the chosen polynomials. So a little question. So what is, can you remind me what is beta? This beta does, mm. what does beta mean? Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I have too many mistakes here. So I'm sorry. So here, nu is i beta. Ah, oh, I think. No, no, it's i beta. I'm sorry. And the, the beta is. So beta is the sum of L many simple roots, and the nu is in i beta. I'm sorry. So here, it should be i beta. Oh, okay. If it's beta, then nu is. A, Determined uh, uh, defined by the sequences, so the sum is equal to beta, right? I'm sorry. Actually, so this is a presentation of the sum of our matrix. All right. So you, yeah, this is a presentation of itself. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you to pick up the spe the specific beta, you need to change the sequence uh, i l by i beta. Thank you. No, no, no. Sam, so, there's always there, no, no, usually Q in Hecke algebras, like quantum. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's over Z Q or Z Q. Like, mm. You're right, not not here, yeah. No, no, we don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean the Q by Hecke algebra cases? Because uh, they their Cox relations deformed by Q, I mean, you said Q. That's right. One, but uh, yeah, we don't. So you cannot uh, um, you cannot get Coxter relations back if you if you, you need to quotient by something, but but how can you get can you get Coxter group from here? No, uh, it's not easy to if you uh, want matches this generator with to the Coxter generators. But if you modify these generators, some of these generators and others and some polynomial and so on. Then there can be or relations in Cox relations. There can be, but if it's not so, so there is some relation with this algebra, with the the group algebra, symmetric group others, and the usual who are affine Hecke algebras. So to get such relations, you need you do not use this generator itself. You should modify to obtain the standard generators for quantum uh, generators of affine Hecke algebras or other well known algebras. Yeah, so, so I understand that this definition looks weird, right? It looks ugly, and this, it looks not beautiful at all, but there is a reason that this relation comes from the geometry. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the certification of this yeah, relation. So now, now let me just give you an example. So if you consider a 3 tight real algebra, so we have think three, three now in the thinking diagram, then for each i, i is one or two or three, right? Then the corresponding cube hack algebra at alpha i. So we have a simple root here, beta. Beta is a simple root. Then this is nothing but the polynomial ring. So this is a graded algebra, right? polynomial ring. And we can consider the one dimensional simple module over this polynomial ring, right? This one. 
And the, I didn't told you that actually the QYK algebra is graded algebra. There is some grading. What I mean is the whole this relation is homogeneous with respect to stable grading. So actually the graded one. And in this case, the, the RPI cases, we consider the, the, uh, the indeterminate Z has grade two is graded. So it's a graded one actually. The, if we consider the one and three, they are not adjacent to each other in the thinking diagram, then corresponding Q by K algebra is isomorphic to the matrix algebra of polynomial link two variables. And if you take one and two, they are adjacent to in thinking diagram, then the corresponding Q by K algebra is something similar to matrix algebra, but with some conditions. And in, if you consider M times R by, so because it's, yeah, we, we, do, we consider the positive root uh, element in the positive root like this, right? So we can consider those kind of element. Then it, it I'm sorry, yeah. I think it's not, so, so it's not this one. But it's isomorphic to the so-called affine nil-hack algebra. So this is the right understanding or right legal, uh, this is, it, you should remember that this one. So Kiva hack algebra is a generalization of affine nil hack algebra. So affine nil hack algebra has a relation that how k square is equal to zero. That's the nil hack algebra because nil comes from that, that property. Yeah. yeah, anyway, so this is an example. And uh, let's consider R beta G mode here. So this is a, so so this is an associated K algebra. So we can consider the finite dimensional modules of this algebra. And this is a G graded algebra, so we can consider the graded modules. So this is a finite dimensional graded modules of K by K algebra at beta. So this is abelian category, it's a nice category. And we consider the two objects from one from the R beta G mode and the other from and comes from the R gamma G mode. Then you can consider the conversion product. So let me just by the, the conversion with the tensor here. Then the conversion product is given by the induction of the outer tensor product of two modules over the bigger algebra, R beta plus gamma. Because this tensor product is embedded in this large algebra R beta plus gamma. So you can consider this kind of induction. And because this is defined in terms of inductions, it, the, the conversion product is associative. So, so we have a, so, so if we take the direct sum of all R beta G mode, then we have abelian category, which has a tensor product. So given by the conversion process. So this is a monoidal category. The whole point is that we define the conversion product by induction, so it is associative. And there is a grading shift functor. Yeah, it's not important in my, in my topology. Anyway, so because the, this is a graded module, so you can take the grade shift, right? So let me denote by this grade functor by Q. So can you remind me how you grade the module M? So by definition, so M is MN, M is G. And if a generator is here, grading M, and V is M into the N, then X times V should be given by M, M plus M. So the, we, we consider the graded other Actually, and RBM is is all the things that uh, have degree M in R. So, so okay. R beta and the grading. So we have a decomposition. So yeah. I did explain. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and this comes from like each generator will have a degree and. That's right. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So okay. if you look at this with the stable degree grading, this the whole defining relations are homogeneous. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so you can just imagine that if you uh, collect all R beta G mode, then we have a nice monoidal category. So now this is the, the theorem of Kubana uh, Flauda and Luque and Barano Barcelot here. So there is a, an algebra isomorphism between those two. So left hand side is the gross and ring because it's a, we have a monoidal category whose tensor product is exact. So you can consider the gross-ending group 
as a ring. So this is the gross center mean. And the right hand side is the the uh, radius of the half of quantum groups. So they are isotropic as an algebra. So actually, this is not enough to describe this isomorphism. But anyway, so so the the simple module I show you before. Yeah, this is a one dimensional simple module of the polynomial ring, right? The very simple one. So it corresponding to the so-called Schwarz generators of the quantum, right? And the assume further that our uh, real algebra G is a symmetric type, and uh, the characteristic of the base field is equal to zero, then what happens is that the classes of self-dual simple modules corresponding to the so-called dual canonical basis of the quantum group. So dual canonical basis, right, the distinguished basis of quantum group, defined by uh, Lustig and Kashiwara is independently. So here, the, so, you, so you consider the simple modules, class of simple to here. self dual means if you take the grading shift, then they become the different simples, right? Yeah. So there is some, the, uh, 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 so there is some notion of self dual simple modules, which is you uh, better the taking the duals. The grading shift doesn't uh, play a role if you take a dual. So this is, yeah, so, so the, the first line is the theorem of Kuala and Rao Danuki, the second line is the theorem of Aran Rupasri. So in that sense, we say that the QYK algebra can be found the negative of quantum groups. But this is a very nice construction. Yeah. And so let me mention one more thing. Under this isomorphism, it's easy to see that, so there is a functor from R beta G mode to R beta minus alpha G mode. So we, uh, decrease weight by minus alpha one. But here the, we take a module M here, and the EIM denotes the module which is multiplied by some idempotent. So and this idempotent is given by this way. So that roughly speaking, we take the uh, we take the sum of all idempotent generator whose uh, uh, it, uh, which start with alpha i at the at the first. And similarly, EI star is a functor by uh, is a multi uh, new multiplied idempotent given this way to the module M, then you get the functor. And the yeah, and this, under this isomorphism, this functor corresponding to operators on the quantum group, right? So this is a functor on this category, so it corresponding to some uh, uh, operators on our quantum group, right? And that's exactly the two-body generator EI and EI star. So here the EI, EI star means that we multiply EI from the uh, no, no, the EI is the two-body generator and the EI star is the star is some automorphism on the quantum group, so you can define. So please recall that this uh, two-body generator action appears before, so when I described the double invariant ring, how do uh, EI and EI star, how do they act? Uh, is it just multiplication? Yes. On the, on yes. On the left? The left? No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me see. No, 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 I, I'm sorry. So this, uh, these are the derivation on this space. Yeah, it's a, it's a certain derivation on this space. So it's a adjoint of the multiplication of FI. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I told you the wrong things. Yeah. You're right. So it, it, it acts on this space with, as an operator, and this is a derivation, which is defined as an adjoint of the left multiplication of FI. So now, 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 now I can, yeah, I can all ask something, but now I can uh, introduce the category C, W, and C, B. So CW is defined, so yeah, you, you constructively, you apply the, the functor EIs whose weight sum is given by in this set, inside this set, then you require that the corresponding module vanishes. <laughs> so similarly, C star B defined this way. So if you remember, so the description of AW and A star W before, so I keep it in the right. 
So, so this one is isomorphic to the cross and ring of our category. And this sub ring is defined by this way, right? So you can vanish it by consecutive application of Schweiz generators. So by this distinction, it's clear that the cross and ring of these subcategories are isomorphic to the ring A sub W and S sub E. And so we want to have the intersection of those two links, right? That was the yeah, W invariant ring. So we take the intersection of the category. Then the, the rotundi ring of this category is isomorphic to the intersection of those two rings so that we recover the W invariant. So remark that actually so there is another description of this category actually. Yeah. It, is, it, it looks much better than, or, or, or a little bit better than this definition. Yeah. So for example, those two categories are moida subcategory of the whole category. If you use this definition, then it's clear. Right, so at this moment, you're not doing any localization yet, right? Not yet. Okay. I hope I can do it in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. You're right. So we are now here. So we need to localize. Yes, yeah, this is a, thank you. So uh, if we consider the generalized binder, then there are just the, the simple module in this category, the corresponding one. Because you, yeah, we, we have our isomorphism between the gross and the ring and the whole to ring of important groups, right? So some function can be uh, identified with some sim uh, some modules. In this case, the generalized minor corresponds to a simple module. So we call it the determination module. So the, our goal is to extend the monodal category we just defined to some other monodal category in which this simple module, this is the object in this category, is invulnerable under the tensor product. So please recall that the tensor product is given by the the conversion product. Then, yeah, then, then now we, we get the desired one, right? So we have to we know this isomorphism. And uh, yeah, if it is involved, then we get this. Right? So localization of the ring means we, we make some element involved, right? So we, we, we extend the ring a little bit larger than the original one. Uh, requiring that the uh, okay, given element are involved. So this is the uh, corresponding procedure. So, so this is the goal. We need the localization of monoidal category at a given family of a simple object. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, so please recall that when the computative ring cases, so if we have a multiplicative subset, say S, then it's a localization of uh, with respect to the multiple subset S, is a set of equivalence classes of pairs of element X and C, such that X is an element in the ring and C is an element in the multiple subset, right? So it's just nothing but the, yeah, you, 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 you write in this way, right? X comma C is equal to the ratio. We denote it by the ratio X by C. And they are uh, equivalent to each other if and only if there is a third element C double prime such that so multiplying C double prime to uh, both sides, you get the equality. And the multiplication is given in the natural way. So you, you take the multiplication of the denominators and the multiplication of the numerator to get the multiplication. So this is a general procedure of localization of a commutative ring. And we, we want to do something for the monetary category here. So we want a category of object. So here T is a monetary category. And we pair of object in T together with some alpha. So alpha is the sequence of integers, and it is denoted by the product of object, some object. Yeah. So, so this is a multiplicative notation, and here is the, the, the additive notation. So alpha plus beta will correspond to the tensor product of two objects. So that the tensor product is given by, yeah, in this way. It's, it, it's analog of this one. You can say that, yeah. And uh, this is uh, just the tensor product of C to the alpha. 
So alpha thing will be corresponding to the C to the alpha some simple module. So alpha cross beta corresponding to C to the alpha cross beta. That's the multiplier theorem notation. Yeah, but if you have this one with this property, then it's easy to see that. It's C alpha comma zero. So we, we want to invert this theorem, this object. And it is isomorphic to this one. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, monoidal unit with alpha, because the alpha is C to the alpha. So that if you, now we can consider this theorem. So here minus alpha. So C to the, up to now we have C to the minus, we don't have C to the minus alpha in our category yet. But if you formally consider this element here, then the tensor product by this rule becomes, yeah, becomes the unit, only the unit, right? So you can invert the, uh, the desired, uh, you can desire the inverted element. I mean, completely. So this is a basic strategy. And, uh, yeah. Remind me what, what C is. Is C here a fixed up object? Yeah, yeah. So, um, C, uh, yeah. so here, C, C, I, uh, family of an object that we want to invert. Oh. Yeah, so if you, for example, if we C1 tensor C2, then I want to denote by C1 times one and three, or vector notation. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, so here the C, C alpha are uh, some family of simple object which we want to invert. So it, it's an element in the multiplicative subset. So, so we can do that. And the, the, to do such a things, we need the notion of right graders. So I think it's, uh, yeah. So right grader is nothing but the, you consider um, uh, tensor product with C, so C is the object we want to invert, right? And uh, so you consider the tensor product C from the left, <laughs> from the right. So you can consider that this is a functor. So you the functor uh, tensoring C from the right and the functor uh, tensoring C from the left. Then there exists a natural transformation. So let me denote by R sub C, which is satisfied those two properties. So we call it the graders. So the, if, if you look at this diagram, then the, uh, the, if you consider your x times y times c, then there are two ways, so natural way to arrive here, and they should be equal. So that's the complete uh, the compatibility of our the natural transformation. And this is the compatible with the multiplication by the monadal unit. So this is the notion we need to define. Yeah. And this is a for single object C, and we have a family of object, then you need the uh, additional compatibility between the, this object. So let me omit this one. So if there was some compatibility, or simply say that the corresponding graders are constant multiples, constants, then the, we can write down in this way. So there is no ambiguity, write down C to the alpha cross beta. There are two ways, right? So C alpha tends to C beta, and the C beta tends to C alpha. They should be isomorphic to each other. So I want to write in just the C alpha plus beta here. So but there is some compatibility. We can uh, construct some morphisms which give us this compatibility. So in short, so if this is a real counting family, some that define in some conditions, then we can write, we, we can define the element C to the alpha plus beta period. So I'll define this. So now we can define. So, so, so well, we have a monoidal category T, right? Then we can consider the object is as we call this thing. And the morphism set is given by the limit of the this homomorphism groups. So this is the tensoring with the C to the delta plus alpha from the right and the C to the delta plus beta from the left. So we consider this group of homomorphisms. Then this, the, uh, this family of groups of homomorphisms forms a direct system by the, the using, uh, by, by the graders we control. So we can take the limit. 
and we define tensor in this way, then everything works well. That's our theorem. Yeah. So by this construction, so we have a uh, the new category say T, T right here. This is the localization. So in this category, so we we consider the our original category is uh, there is a the canonical functor from our original category to the localized category. Then the the CI that was the simple module, a simple object we want to invert, right? It's a real invert of them by the construction. And the second, the grader is becomes isomorphism. And the third is that this category key prime is a universal with this property that uh, yeah. So if we have a two uh, a functor from T to some other category satisfying those two conditions, then the, our category T tilde is the initial among all those the extended categories. So this is a yeah, this is a universal property of localization of links. You can consider it. Is it unique? Uh, is there a uniqueness? Uh, yes, unique up to up to uh, 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 equivalence. Tell the uh, for this functor. Tell the uh, uh, yeah. Unique of It's it's determined by F. Let me see. Uh, Yes, yes. When the objects are fixed, is the functor unique? If uh, tilde t, tilde tau, and tau prime are fixed, is uh, tilde f unique? Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. Oh, let me see. Yes. You mean if those two are fixed, then it's unique? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there, there's usually some kind of uh, uniqueness in the universal property. So uh, here you're saying that there exists. Uh, you, you don't say that there exists a unique monoidal functor. You're just saying oh. that there exists a monoidal it, It's uniquely determined by FM psi, actually. It's, so it's unique. And it, because it, it has universal property, so the category T tilde is a unique of the equivalence. There are two uniqueness, I think. Yeah, so the, the uniqueness of this arrow uh, until the, uh, the monoid function. I think this is because if, it, uh, this, if they are exist, then it should be given by the F and psi. So the uniqueness is from the beginning, it should be like this. I, I mean, so if, yeah, so the, the typical element in T tilde is for this form. And you you send it f tilde. Then then the, the, it, yeah it, this is and so product f of c of r it should be this way. I think so. Yes. Any other questions then? Uh, uh, so, uh, so for this RCI in your particular category, is this RCI canonical or you have to choose some RCI to define the uh, right? So the whole things uh, depend on the existence of RCI. Right? So if you have a family you want to invert, then you should construct RCI. That's the whole you problem. You should choose not canonical, right? It's not canonical. You should choose something, right? We don't know that it exists or not from the beginning. And if it exists, you have to show something. Oh. Yes. Yeah. There can be, yeah. Uh, you mean the whole of even family, even family, there are several, maybe several. Yeah. The different truths may result different localization. I think so, yeah. But, oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah so the point is that if the, the, uh, the right grade exists, then we can say this. So the whole problem becomes the construct for natural transformation, RCI. Oh, but this universal property shows that it is unique. Like even you have different choice of RCI, it, there's isomorphism, right? Yeah, so please look at here, right? Here in the data, RCI here. Yeah, as long as it is isomorphism, then it's okay. It's unique, right? 
Why? Why? Because if you choose different RCI, as a, each RCI is unique, uh, is isomorphism, then you can apply this theorem to, to show that there is some kind of uh, universal. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I maybe can go. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, so it's universal among the category which is by both conditions one and two. Ah, yeah. right? Yes, yes. So if we take a different RCI here, then there are different conditions. So you cannot compare. Uh, okay, I see. I see. Maybe all right. Yeah. But in examples we studied, the it looks there are some chemical choices if they exist. Ah, so in your example, everything is canonical, right? Uh, sorry? In your example, everything is canonical. Uh, right. But does it mean canonical is a, it's a, a software problem? But it, there are, it seems that there are natural choices. Natural choice. Oh, OK. Yeah, so now, now we can state the domain theorem here. So CI is the family of a, Determines from user corresponding to generalized minors. So recall that we want to invert this one. So the, our theorem is there is on, we construct this one. This is our theorem. So the RCI, which is a natural transformation, yeah. or we call it vibrators, which is set by all the conditions. So we can construct the localization. Then the, the second is the parallel from the first. You just take the person in the ring and you can so I'm sorry, there's no details here. Yeah, so the main part is the construction of this one. So no, no details. Here. So yeah, I think almost that. So let me just, yeah, I think let me, it's better to stop here. Time is over. Well, you can finish this, maybe. It's one page, but it's the last page, right? Yeah, so, so this is just, yeah, so for example, this category has some property. Uh, so not only we construct this category, we study this property. So first one is the, it, this category is the right rigid. That means it's the right dual with the vector test product. It's, a, it's, a, it's just dual, but it's a, the, there are two notions of dual, right dual and left dual. So we show that it has right dual. And if the variable element W B satisfy those conditions, if you, yeah, if you multiply sides to the right to the W, then it, it becomes larger. And if you want to find B from the right, and it becomes larger. Then those two the uh, localization are uh, isomorphic to each uh, equivalent to each other. So actually, the second is uh, yeah, so it's true for open size varieties. So it's a, it's a version of one of the categories. And the remark is the yeah, it's the same as the one we, I told you the hope. So when uh, we expect that actually this category is a monadic allocation of the cluster structure. So I don't explain why it's a monadic allocation here. So now I can stop here. Yes. Uh, okay, let's thank this paper. Any questions? Uh, do you understand computationally uh, the structure of this? Uh, like monoidal categorification of C, R, W, V. So for example, when you say that you expect that this categorifies the cluster structure, yes. I assume for the cluster structure, you can do computations in low rank, Yes. right? Yes. Can you do the same computations in low rank and match just computationally the, the two structures? Yes, uh, so uh, low rank means, uh, some, some small cases. Yeah, like LB are very small. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Then, or the more precisely, if we did the finite type cluster algebras, okay. then we have only finite many cross bedrooms, right? So yeah. you can calculate. So in that case, we can check it given by examples. Okay. Yeah. And the, the actually, the, what, what the situation is much more beyond the finite type cross algebras. Okay, okay. Sorry, what? In in which cases do you have finite type cluster algebras and in which cases you don't? So for example, for GLN, if you pick any V and W, is it a possibility that you have infinite type cluster algebra? Yes. No, no, no. Yeah. Ah, okay. And in, in that situation, you can't compare, you, you don't know how to. Yeah, 
compared to two. So, um, so now it's known that this ring has a cross sector structure by these people. Okay. And uh, we expect that the monoidal case, so that means actually I didn't give a definition that monoidal calculation cross algebra means the cross monomial in this cross algebra yeah. corresponding to the simple object here. Okay. So we have some general procedure to, to deal with such a mutation sequence. I, I mean, the mutation is an inductible uh, way to produce new things, right? So we have some way to deal with such an inductive step in monoidal category. Okay. But still, the problem, actually, the, the most important problem is actually what is the correspond, the, uh, what is the nice initials here? Okay. Consisting of a simple object in this category, which uh, would give us the monoidal calculation using our general procedure. It's not clear. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not clear. So, in, if we, WNV is large enough, then what is the best in the seed? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's not clear. And assuming you had this. Monoidal categorification, would you prove something like uh, positivity of monomial expansion or some okay. results like that? So, uh, so you mean the if we have monoidal clarification, then yes. what can you say more? Yes. Uh, basically, I think it's nothing more oh, <laughs> in okay. some sense because the, this is the cross algebra, yeah. and it's it's known that this cross algebra is nice in some sense. Then, for example, you can apply the Growth ranking kill concept condition here. Ah, so you already so know from those prior works that it's. Yeah, so ah. the, the Boran positivity is known. Ah, if we have a monoidal calculation, then we get the Boran positivity by the, the corollary, but it's already known. So oh, okay. it's nothing new, but uh, we want to have this one because it, it, we believe that this monoidal calculation is the uh, explain. Uh, What's going on is category actually. Yeah, I think we are just in this category yeah. I see, I see. Okay, is there any other questions? Yeah, what, what, so if you go to Schubert cells, uh, oh. is there a categorification, a similar categorification of Schubert cells? That's right. And so in the Schubert case, the same cases, there is some more categorization. So this is what we expect. This one. This is, yeah, in this case, we proved that. So this category is indeed, so I mean, it's the uh, first monomial in this ring is corresponding to the simple object in this category. I think this, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, a, I think that's a nice result. And we expect this result can be yeah, generalized in this case. And actually, yeah, we can, you can use this on first time. Okay, is there oh, oh. Uh, you didn't mention uh, quantum affine algebras, but mm -hmm. is there if you if you just look at this R W V, mm -hmm. is there a way to interpret this precise object in terms of quantum affine algebra? That's a very nice question, actually. So uh, yeah, so there's a board, there's a board. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, ah, one more. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Yeah, so, how okay, can I say? So, CW. Thank you, CW. And this is RG. See? And actually, so, in if the from the beginning, the real algebra G is finite. Symmetric, one simple race. Then this is a, you can the top category of the finite dimensional. Yeah, sure. So there is, there is a function, um, fully based function, and this is the show by the so in this sense, so this category 
is inside the here. So my, my question was maybe, do you understand the image like explicitly? So like, uh, how can I explain this? Like, for example, maybe there's some symbols in, in, in CWV. Do you understand the image of those? Can you characterize the image of those symbols on the right hand side? Yes, I think so. Yeah, if you have, then you can calculate. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the problem is that maybe I don't know. You are asking. So, so here are lots of subcategories which has a, a, a moment of calculation. So there are lots of subcategory of the finite dimension also category of quantum algebra which has a moment of calculation, but it's not corresponding to anyone here. Ah, okay. Uh, that, yeah, I think with your question is related to this. Okay, okay. So okay. We, can, we yeah. cannot reduce the problem to spaces. I see. Uh, but still, yeah, it's in, so, so work, uh, as I said, when, when you consider this one, we do not see this category. Mm -hmm. with an example of I see, okay. Still, inside here, it's still new one, uh, still not known. I see, okay, that's great. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, I have a question. <laughs> so, uh, I, sorry, I, I'm not familiar with the subject, but I'm just curious about is like RWV has any relation with RBW? Uh, yeah. uh, no, uh, so RBW? Yes. Yeah. Are they completely different? Or? Mm -hmm. Because the, they, are, they should compare over with the Broad order. So if if it is non empty, if and only if W is larger than B. Ah, so it's ah, ah, I see. Make no sense, but okay. Oh, no, zero, right? You you can take it. And they are. Ah, that's great. This, maybe this is the right. If it does change, swap that, then it doesn't make sense. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, my second question is like, uh, in, in, in your talk, everything is like quantumized, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so for the quantumization, you have some kind of specialization, let's say Q equal to one, right? Mm -hmm. And in, in, in this category that you constructed, this Q is corresponding to some shipping operator, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what happens if Q equal to one in your category? Oh, so we just ignore the gradient. Ignore the gradient, oh, ah. We just ignore the gradient. What does that mean by ignoring the gradient or just so, take the constant part or the... Yeah, yeah, so we just, we, we regard those design as no P in R, G, uh, if we prove some new category, which it, it's a another category, which there is no gradient, means we, we regard the R. Ah, uh, so, so so you just make it as isomorphism, like shift is as isomorphism. So, well, you just consider, you, you forgot the gradient from the beginning. Okay, okay. So that's just the, the representations. I, 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 but but uh, and uh, is this already some uh, established theory in the classical sense? Uh, Which one do you mean? Uh, like, like just like Q equal to one. Does anyone previously have some categorification of this? Oh, I think it, uh, this expression. I thought it, it's it's enough. I mean, uh, yeah. So so M is a gradient. Over R delta, then you can regard it as an ungraded module or just module. Um, yeah. Then there's more homomorphisms. Yeah. So you get such a nice one. So, so yeah, so this is so forgetting the grading means this one. Okay. Yeah. So what we do this model. So yeah, so so grading, table grading is a big deal. Yeah. Then the, you 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 can forward it. Yeah. And is, is this kind of phenomenon happens in other like in other whenever you want to categorize the quantum thing? Is is this Q always like shifting or uh, is like special in Q? So actually I don't know other the clarification of the quantum things, but for example, in some cases people categorize some quantum books or quantum things in terms of uh, additive category. With the drive category, 
and then in some cases, the Q corresponding to the group, the degree shift from the group. Ah, I see. So it's, it, that's a different, right? Yeah. So, so in our setting, we consider the monoidal category, whose growth and link gives the some quantum group. And in this setting, the Q is a grading shift from the place to the of Q. But if you, yeah, it depends on the categorization. Yeah, actually, what you said reminded me of something like the, like the equal value of Frobenius, right? Like in the different cohomology, right? So, so I forgot about it, but I just felt something similar. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, okay. you, may, you may talk, you may tell me more. Yeah, yeah, you can talk more afterwards. Uh, okay, so is there any questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker for a wonderful talk. Uh, okay, we might have some snacks at the, at the other room, so you can just check it out and uh, have more conversation with speakers.